Hey, Cringe and B here, hanging out at the South Melbourne Town Hall. We are here for the Community Play Party, which is a follow-up to the Global Game Jam. This happened in South Melbourne uh, a few weeks ago as of recording. You didn't go to the Global Game Jam, did no. you? No, did you? I was there. Um, I'm going to cut to a story later on about how that went. But uh, this event is pretty much a like a hands-on event, right? Yes, we actually get to play what people have made throughout that... 48 hours, you yes. know, because people love being in a room with other people for 48 hours, making super, one thing. Super chill, yeah. no stress at all. Yeah. Uh, it, very, it had a, sort of like a uni campus kind of vibe. Did like it? Walking into, well, I mean, people were also sleeping there because mm. uh, that's that's a game jam. And healthy. Yeah, super healthy. Uh, they were actually, it was, it was pretty under control, but um, I'm yet to play a lot of the games there. You have played some? I played some. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. So uh, let's head on in and check it out. So we're here uh, with Michelle who made uh, Kintsugi, right? Yeah, so in this game jam for me is a little different because I'm volunteering as well. So I didn't really have a long time to work on it. So I decided on one very simple mechanic and just repeat and just make as many levels as I could. During the the intro where they show the team, they showed like different um, like different repair and then there was that little clip where they showed Kintsugi. And I thought it was quite interesting because it's the Japanese art of repairing ceramics with gold. And it's not about covering your imperfection, it's about embracing it. And I thought that was a really good concept because like, you know, like you, you fall, fall apart, but then you can put your back Put, your, put yourself back together again, and that makes you more beautiful, like your scars define you. So yeah. <laughs> it's a really cute game, and if you make more of it, I'd love to play more of it. All right, thank you. Olivia and James, you guys worked on Tower Tussle. Uh, this is a, like a competitive, game where, I mean, the theme was repair. You'd probably be in a better position to explain it than I am. So it's local versus. One player is the wrecker and one player is the repairer. And you're just like pitted against each other. There's a 20 second clock, so it's really short and intense. And it's all physics based. So as the wrecker, you're trying to whirl the wrecking ball around and just destroy the tower. Yeah, I did all the programming. Olivia did the, um, the modeling and graphic design and sourcing all of the sound effects and music. Um, I've done a few game jams before, but it's my first time working with Olivia as a, as a partner, which is, c comes with some challenges. We had a... <laughs> being in a relationship, we're uh, more... We can have a, a serious argument and actually, like, yeah, we, We're, like, a lot more confident about fighting for our ideas. And, um, yeah, just more honest um, opinions. So that that's actually really good creatively to be able to openly argue. Whereas I feel like if I was with a stranger, I wouldn't push my ideas very much. So yeah, I think that was pretty good working together. All right, so I'm here with Councillor Tim Baxter for City of Port Phillip. You helped do this? Yes, absolutely. Well, we're, we're one of the principal sponsors uh, of this event and uh, we're really excited to uh, have helped fund this through the Love My Place um, grants that we, uh, that we do. Uh, and uh, we're just wanting to have a deeper and stronger relationship with game developers and creators uh, in our municipality. So is there a reason you're so passionate about video games compared to, I mean, not that you're not passionate about other ones, but is there a reason that this is a little bit more direct? For sure. Well, look, I'm, personally, I'm a gamer, um, and so that's I, I've got a passion there already. But um, when I got onto council, uh, I knew that there were a lot of game developers around this area. And I said to the staff, can you just find out what's the economic impact? Like, how big are they? Um, and they uh, went away and they came back and they said, well, um, uh, creative, uh, digital creative arts account for about 35% of economic activity in the city of Port Phillip. And I went, that's enormous. We, we, we need to plug into this to these people, they're, they're, they're generating so much, uh, you know, creative output, they're making money, they're employing people, like, it's fantastic. We said, um, that why don't we uh, fund, uh, part fund the uh, the jam and the community play party where we can take a, a big, beautiful public place like our South Melbourne Town Hall and uh, invite the community to come in and play your games. So I've heard that Port Phillip is actually, uh, has a game development action plan. Can you tell me more about that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we're developing our game action plan. It's going to be out later this year. Uh, and it's basically going to be our roadmap to making Port Phillip the uh, games capital of Victoria. And we're not just talking about digital video games. We're also talking about um, you know, activating uh, our spaces through play. Um, it's really about making games and play and uh, the way that we interact through each other in a playful manner uh, a real focus for our council. So that means working with the games industry. It means getting jammers to come up with creative concepts for us. It means doing things out in our streets. Um, it's, there's going to be so many ways it intersects with different parts of our life. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it because it's a, it's a local government first. No other council is doing this. And uh, we're really proud to be leaders in this way. <laughs> awesome. That's so exciting. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you very much. And um, happy jamming. So this is the community play party at the South Melbourne Town Hall, but this isn't the actual game jam. Melbourne Global Game Jam happened at JMC Academy in South Melbourne, and I went to check it out. I'm Giselle Rosman. I've been running Melbourne Global Game Jam for 10 years now, and I'm also the Regional Director for Australia and New Zealand. A Game Jam is an event where small groups of people get together over a limited period of time to make a game generally based on a common theme. See, I've done that before. <laughs> I'd started organising IGDA Melbourne, which is the International Game Developers Association. So that was in 2009, and by the end of 2010, we'd heard about this game jam thing, and it sounded like a bit of fun. I was working at La Trobe University at the time, and somehow I managed to convince them to let me host a jam there. It was 70 then. You have. 200 and something now? Yeah, we're at about, I think about 230 this year. We maxed out the year before last, we had over 300 and I found a number that's too many and that's it. We announce a theme, we have just announced it here in Melbourne, repair. And so now some teams have already formed, some people are still trying to find their teams and then they all sit down and brainstorm and think what kind of game am I thinking I want to make based on the idea of repairing. We get a lot of students jamming and it's a great spot for them. And there are people who've been studying for two and three years and they've never finished anything, like ever yeah. finished a game. And so when you see those kids at the end of a jam and they've Got it. They've made a shiny new thing and yeah. it wasn't there before and they've made it all from go to woe. And they light up and they're just so, that was amazing. <laughs> and yeah, and then I end up in tears and then I come back again the next year so that it happens again. I'm Ella. And I'm Kerry, I'm working on the same game. Our team name is Cautiously Hopeful. <laughs> Not too hopeful, just like appropriately hopeful. Cautiously. Yes. Yeah. Our game is called uh, Hey. Hey, we need to talk. We need to talk. <laughs> we were just like, what's the most anxiety inducing message you can get from someone? And we're like, that's the name of the game. That's yeah. the sentence. Yep. Yeah. That's it. We had to immediately instill that in straight away. Yeah. This year's theme is repair. Mm. So we basically focused on trying to repair a dysfunctional relationship. Whether that works out, whether that doesn't work out, or I guess you'll have to find out. I mean, spoiler alert, there are no happy endings here. <laughs> <laughs> I basically wanted to, to paint a picture where you were you were kind of seeing this, learning about this relationship as you were trying to repair mm. it at the same time. Right. Um, and you're starting to understand where the communication breakdowns were coming from as you were as trudging you through, through the story. Yeah. And like you were uh, Ella in charge of the sort of narrative design and Carrie, you you said production, but I would... Yeah, yeah I'm the jack of all trades, master or not. Right. Um, yeah. Make um, sure that we design. all do stuff. Yeah. Right. I didn't want to jump in straight away because I was like, oh, I don't know what type of applicable skills I have mm. to a game jam, but You've had <laughs> oh, I've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> I have not had a moment of rest, which is a good thing. Yes. Because that is what my biggest fear was having nothing to do. And that is the complete opposite that of what happened. So much. <laughs> <laughs> a good big call. thing about getting into like uh, full time work in the dev game dev community is your ability to work in a team yeah. and to effectively communicate your your needs 
The game jam is just a hyper concentrated version of that. It's a, it's a pressure cooker. A lot of people, I think, coming into game dev, they're just like, oh, I just need to be the best at art or the best at programming. But what a lot of them aren't told necessarily at uni, and I wish that this was communicated more, and I think that a lot of universities are putting more work into this, is that being able to work in a team is much more valuable than being just a little bit better at the skill that you're specializing mm, in. Right. Because it is such a collaborative environment and you have to have good people skills and problem solving skills. It is so vital when you work in these huge teams with so many moving parts. Mm, absolutely, and you should kind of know a little bit about what each role does. Yes, and you definitely learn that here. Oh yeah. <laughs> My name's Jacob and I'm here at Global Game Jam 2020. Uh, I'm in the team Super Chill. I'm Sarah, I'm also working as Super Chill. I'm the artist primarily for this, so I'm making all our 3D assets. And we're working on a game called Now This Is Art. You play as a child who has been tasked with restoring famous classical artworks from Van Gogh and Dali, etc. But the only tools you have at your disposal are child's art and craft. Tools, such as glitter glue. Yeah, and it, it plays kind of like MS Paint plus like kid picks, like that's mm. what the controls are like. The reason our team name is super chill is because that's how it approaches the game jam, is to just be really chill and relax about it. So it's like, we're not really stressed out, we're taking it easy, and as long as like, even what we've got right now, most of us are like, yeah, I'm happy this is like a game and it's a thing. And whatever we can do from there is gonna be good too, so yeah. When we were ideating our concepts, we made sure that those concepts were really, really small. We just started out working out who the protagonist was and what the goal was, and then the main thing that they do. And that was it, and that yeah. is what our entire game is. There's no other kind of conflicts or... Yeah. You just, uh, just have fun, basically. Make yeah. it all up. Yeah, so... Kid picks, man. That influenced yeah. <laughs> the, the, the level of production. We knew that there was just those kind of three things to do. This is our third. Yeah, this is our third global game, game jam. jam. We did the first one together, second one separately, and then we did another game jam together that we didn't finish. We didn't finish Ludum and Dare. I <laughs> did one of the Gogic Academy game jams like over a year ago. For me, it's definitely about like making sure my skills are still being polished, making them still work on things, making sure I'm adding to my portfolio where I can and meeting other game developers and like networking and just working on my career, like the start of my career basically, yeah. I would say for me it's uh, about experimenting with new ideas um, and something that's more about expression and fun and just being creative and really flexing creative muscles. Learning some new things along the way as well is, is inevitable and part of it but that's what really excites me is the experimentation and doing something that I would never take the time to explore. Um, in like a commercial project or something. Exactly, and some things I've taken from game jams, not necessarily full ideas, but just how I approach something or, or visuals or, you know. Yeah. Exactly, that I've been able to take, um, even production tools and that kind of stuff yeah. that I've been able to experiment with. I think a really big part of game jams are the community at the game jam and also around the game jam. And I know it's one of my favorite bits is just to be in a creative environment with so many people, A, that I just like, but they're also creative in really different ways and have yeah. different ideas. Like, That's a huge part of why game jams are valuable and enjoyable. What I think really is so good about like game jam for like all different career stages, I guess we'll say, is that it's always good to have more on your resume in terms of like ship products if you do want to show your skill set. Sure. So whether you're a student or whether you're in a established career human, they're all really valuable things. 100%. Mm. Like any time I've ever been yeah. part of a judging panel for any type of like funding or applications to do something, I'm always looking for Game Jam written there. Like I've participated in Game Jam. I've done it this many you can community make events. And like, you know, yeah. pull it together. Mm. Do we get artists who turn up with watercolours and stuff and we scan that into digital games or you get you know programmers who decide to do some art and like it's just that creative flow of doing something really wacky and zany and and it doesn't matter if it's a big trash flyer that's fine you know it's great if it's not yeah. but if it is and you had fun along the way then you've jammed correctly in my view.